Now introducing Dr. Jacare Damages. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to Dr. Damages show. We're coming to you live from New York City. Damn, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Why? Oh, with the band live streaming from Nigeria. So I'm not supposed to say I'm coming to you live from New York anymore. Oh yeah, that, that's the, that's the new, new law in Nigeria, you know. But uh, the law is aimed at stopping you from seeing these pictures. Last weekend, the Biafran leader, Andike Mbanewi, Chief Emeka Odumego Juku, was buried. Wow. Yeah. One of the things we learned during the burial was that Ngozi Okonjo Iwala was a cook for the Biafran soldiers during the war. Wow. Oh, yeah. Ask what she cooked for the Biafran soldiers. Uh -huh. She mentioned Okazi swaps. No way. Broccoli. Wow. <laughs> micro cheese. What? And palliatives. God knows what. <laughs> also, at the burial, President Jonathan announced that he considered Ojuku's burial his own burial. That, 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 one, that one was beyond me. Some experts who understand of the old culture said that it was the first thing the president must say before he claims Ojuku's wife, Bianca, <laughs> as, as his second wife. Yeah. Did, did you all hear Bianca's tribute to Ojuku? It, it was an instant classic. Mm. I, I, think, I think all women should learn that and memorize it. Mm. It should be made a standard text in Wayek. As a matter of fact, anything short of that kind of speech, the widow must be investigated as a possible killer of the husband. Mm. Oh, yeah. To show how serious it, I took this, I made it known to my wife. She, she asked me, do you write poems for me? Do you buy me flowers? Do you call me at 10 p.m. every day, anywhere in the world you are? These women, they always expect too much. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in his own contribution, Governor Pito B. of Anambra State said that the Civil War ended the day Ojuku was buried. Wow. I understand that the governor didn't do well at school, but <laughs> even the worst student in my primary school knew that the Civil War ended the moment Gowon dropped his AK-47 yes, sir. and became a prayer warrior. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was when Boko Haram picked up their AK-47. <laughs> I'm not saying they are connected. Oh, well, I mentioned last week that Nigerian football is on a free fall. Our national team is performing so badly that the Senate, they are having closed sessions trying to find solutions to our problem. Mm. Wow. Well, it got worse this week. South Africa gave 125 Nigerians red cards. Ah. Mm. They landed in South Africa and claimed to be footballers. Uh -uh. But when they were tested, they each dribbled the ball with the wrong foot. <laughs> OK, OK, I understand. It wasn't about football. Uh -huh. Those Nigerians deported from South Africa did not have yellow cards. Mm. Let me guess. They were there to be referees? No? <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK, 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 OK. It, in what became a full diplomatic uh, tit for tat, Nigeria deported two batches of South Africans. Uh -huh. wow. The official reason given was that in their immigration forms, these South Africans claimed that they are visiting Nigeria to check out possible hospitals where Nelson Mandela could be treated. Are you serious? <laughs> but looking at the people deported, they were South African prostitutes working in Nigeria. The real reason our politicians deported these girls was because the prostitutes infected our politicians with HIV. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank God the diplomatic palaver has been settled. Thank you know. God. Hallelujah. In initially, South Africa refused to apologize to Nigeria. But the moment our president picked up the phone and called Boko Haram, mm. 
the South Africans bowed. Yes, sir. Wow. That, that's why it's good to have bad boys in, ah! in, in your country. <laughs> in Money News, Forbes magazine has just listed the richest countries in the world. Sadly, Nigeria did not make it. Oh, oh yeah. But a little known country in Africa made it. The country is called Dangota Stan. Say what? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, the magazine published the list of the most powerful women in the world. Wow. Our own patient, Jonathan, came in at 48. Wow. 48. She was beaten by Deziani Alison Madeke, Nigeria's oh, wow. oil minister, who came in at 12. Since then, our president, President Jonathan, has not been able to sleep with both eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> Two prominent Nigerians marked their birthdays this week. Pastor Enoch Adeboye of the Redeemed Church of God and the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, of the Indeed Church of Thieves, <laughs> otherwise known as PDP. Adeboye and Obasanjo are two different people. One is an autocratic leader who revived a dying religion of mindless believers and enriched himself in the process. The other one is Obasanjo. <laughs> Even though nobody knows when Obasanjo was born or how old he was, Lagos State's government closed down Victoria Island as VIPs from all over the world arrived to mark his birthday. Wow. At the event, Patience Jonathan shared a table with former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Look at how affectionately Atiku was looking at patients. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Something, something is going on. Meanwhile, not to be outdone, in faraway Abuja, the president had his eyes on Miss Deziani Alison Mareke. Compare, compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. <laughs> Such show of wealth as we saw at Obasanjo's birthday pissed off a lot of Nigerians. One of them went straight to Maritala Mohammed International Airport without a passport and a visa mm. and entered a plane to Europe. <laughs> Authorities stopped the man and called him a madman. <laughs> but our investigation showed that the man wasn't mad. If you remember, some months back, a man punched a passenger at the same airport. Mm. That was the same man. He said that after seeing the spectacle going on at Victoria Island party in honor of Obasanjo, he had no option but to leave Nigeria. Of course. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Now, I have good news and bad news. Okay. The good news is that Ms. Ngozi Okonjo Iwala has been nominated as a candidate for the president of the World Bank. Uh, congrats, congrats. Yeah, yeah. If you all pray very hard, you know, she may leave Nigeria alone very soon. Which is what we are looking for. Even though some people who know how those things work are saying that it's easier for Prophet T.B. Joshua to become the next Pope than it is for Ngozi to become the next president of the World Bank. <laughs> that is all I can say or that's all I'm allowed to say because if I say more, Madame might sue me for 20 billion naira. <laughs> now for the bad news. The Banj and Don Jezi are breaking up. No way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Everyone is asking who is the other woman. <laughs> we, we have an exclusive picture of the woman. Please show that picture, Chad. <laughs> no, 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 not that one, not that one. <laughs> no, no, not that one, not that one. Yes, yes, that one, that one. <laughs> the reason for the breakup was creative differences. <laughs> With this woman, Kosi, a little creative difference says a lot. You know, for instance, if you move from 34D to 34 double D, it, wow. the difference will be significant. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like seven up. Meanwhile, here in New York, a Nigerian woman, three months pregnant, delivered cocaine at JFK Kennedy this week. No. Wow. Oh, yeah. The cocaine weighed three pounds. Yeah. Its first words were, tell Bobby Brown that I'm, I've arrived. Oh. <laughs> well, Bobby Brown is in Nigeria performing with his band, The Ancient Edition. <laughs> I leave you with this picture of Bobby Brown at the Nigerian airport. Take a good look at those security men. What are they? Total ninjas? <laughs> Until next week, this is Dr. Damages. I diagnose. You heal yourself! Yeah.
Thank you, thank you, thank you.